Hello, I'm Joseph Graff. This video is one part of a 500 part video series where I analyze the 500 largest companies in America. If you'd like to check out my other videos where I conduct stock analysis on other companies, I will include the link in the description. Also, I'd like to say that if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post future updates. Lastly, I'd also like to talk about M1 Finance. M1 Finance is running a great promotion right now where if you sign up using my referral link, we both receive $10 that we can use to invest in the stock market. I'll include my referral link below. Thank you all for watching and here's the video. Berkshire Hathaway was founded in 1839 by Oliver Chase. Warren Buffett then bought the company in 1962. Berkshire Hathaway owns a wide variety of brands including Geico, Duracell, Dairy Queen, and Fruit of the Loom. They also own a minority stake in many different U.S. companies such as Apple. Berkshire Hathaway is probably most well known for its owner, Warren Buffett, who is considered to be one of the greatest investors of all time. Berkshire Hathaway's operating segments include insurance group, manufacturing businesses, Berkshire Hathaway Energy, and multiple others. Berkshire Hathaway is a very diverse company with a lot of investments in a lot of different businesses. In 2019, Berkshire Hathaway's largest segment was manufacturing, which was responsible for $62.73 billion in revenue. Berkshire Hathaway also has an investment segment, as I mentioned earlier, where the company takes a minority stake in different companies, mainly U.S. companies. This was one of Berkshire Hathaway's most profitable segments in 2019. Berkshire Hathaway is currently the sixth largest company in America, valued at $444 billion. In this next slide, I will be talking about earnings and earnings growth. These two metrics are important because they are the driving force behind a company's valuation and thus the company's stock price. Companies usually report their earnings every quarter. Large, stable companies tend to have positive earnings while companies with high growth potential may operate at a loss in the hopes that they will become profitable in the future. Understanding a company's earnings and earnings growth goes a long way in being able to accurately value a company. In 2014, Berkshire Hathaway's B-class shares earned $8.06 per share. In 2015, that number jumped up 21% to $9.76. In 2016, Berkshire Hathaway performed similarly to the previous year, once again earning $9.76 per share. In 2017, Berkshire Hathaway's earnings per share jumped all the way up to $8.21, which was a 87% growth from the previous year. In 2018, Berkshire Hathaway earned just $1.63 per share which was a 91% decrease from the previous year. And in 2019, Berkshire Hathaway earned $33.20 per share, which was a 1,936% increase from the previous year. This data indicates that Berkshire Hathaway has grown on average 32% per year since 2014. However, I would be careful with this data it's not that Berkshire Hathaway necessarily did very poorly in 2018 and then amazing in 2019. The earnings per share reflect how the company operates and are more a function of accounting practices rather than company performance. Now that we've looked at the company's earnings, we will now talk about its price to earnings ratio, also known as PE ratio. PE ratio is calculated by dividing a company's price per share by its past year's earnings per share. Generally, companies with low PE ratios are considered value stocks, while companies with higher PE ratios are considered growth stocks. PE ratio is a useful metric for understanding how Wall Street feels about a stock. In general, a stock with a PE ratio under 15 means investors are somewhat pessimistic about a company's future, while a PE ratio above 30 indicates that investors are optimistic about the company's future. As of May 3rd, 2020, Berkshire Hathaway's B-class shares were trading at $182.67 per share. This represents a trailing 12-month price-to-earnings ratio of 19.16. 
This is slightly lower than the trailing 12-month price-to-earnings ratio of the Standard Poor 500 at the time of the recording, which was 20.3. In this next slide, I will be talking about the company's price to earnings growth ratio, also known as PEG ratio. This ratio is calculated by taking a company's PE ratio and dividing it by the company's growth rate in terms of a percentage. It is generally thought that companies with a PEG equal to or around one are fairly valued. Companies with a PEG above one may be overvalued while companies with a PEG ratio below one may be undervalued. PEG is a popular metric among many investors because it takes both a company's earnings as well as earnings growth into account. As of May 3rd of 2020, Berkshire Hathaway's B-Class shares were trading at $182.67 per share. This represents a 2.74 trailing 12-month price-to-earnings growth ratio. This indicates that Berkshire Hathaway's B-Class shares could be a bit overvalued if you use this metric solely to evaluate the stock. In this next slide, we will go over the company's dividend yield, dividend growth rate, and dividend payout ratio. Dividends are generally a sign of a healthy, profitable, mature company. It does, however, indicate that the company feels it has limited growth prospects as the company is choosing to pay cash to shareholders rather than reinvesting it into growth opportunities. Dividend growth rate is the rate that a company grows its dividend payments year over year. A high dividend growth rate is usually seen as a positive to investors. Dividend payout ratio is another important metric. It represents the percentage of a company's profits that it pays out as dividends. A payout ratio below 60% usually indicates that the company's dividend is safe and has room to grow in the future. A payout ratio above 100% means the company will almost certainly cut its dividend as that means that the company is paying out more in dividends than it is earning. Berkshire Hathaway currently does not pay a dividend. They instead choose to reinvest the money that they earn back into growing their business. Berkshire Hathaway frequently purchases existing companies, invests in growing their own company, and buys back their company's stock. I predict that Berkshire Hathaway will continue to not pay a dividend in the near future because their leaders feel that they can put the money to better use than returning it to the shareholders. In this next slide, we will be going over the company's price to book ratio as well as its debt to equity ratio. The book value of a company is essentially the value of all of its assets. Book value per share is simply the book value divided by the number of outstanding shares. Furthermore, the company's price to book is just its price per share divided by its book value per share. This metric can help you understand if a stock may be undervalued or overvalued. A company's debt to equity ratio is calculated by taking the sum of all of its debts or liabilities and dividing it by the total shareholder equity. In general, companies with a lower debt to equity ratio are better equipped to withstand an economic downturn. Debt, however, can be used by companies to grow and expand which is why a high debt to equity ratio is not necessarily a bad thing. As of May 3rd of 2020, Berkshire Hathaway's B-Class shares had a book value per share of $174.28. This represents a price to book ratio of 1.05, which is definitely on the lower end compared to a lot of US companies. Berkshire Hathaway also has a debt to equity ratio of zero as it has no long-term debt. This is pretty unusual for US companies and companies in the Standard & Poor 500. Most companies carry at least some long-term debt. In the next slide, we will look at the company's three-year, five-year, and 10-year return. A company's past performance does not predict its future performance. However, it does allow you to see how a company has done in recent years. In general, a steadily increasing stock price indicates a company has been operating successfully. If you had bought Berkshire Hathaway stock three years ago on May 1st of 2017 
and held it for all three years, you would have seen an average annual return of 3.9%. If you had bought Berkshire Hathaway stock on May 1st of 2015 and held it for five years, you would have seen an average annual return of 5.6%. And if you had bought Berkshire Hathaway stock on May 1st of 2010 and held it for 10 years, you would have seen an average annual return of 9%. In this next slide, I give my grades for this stock. I'll include grades for how I feel this stock is as a defensive investment, a growth investment, as well as an overall investment. My defensive grade takes into account how well I think the company would do in an economic downturn. My growth grade for the company takes into account how much I expect the stock to grow in future years. Finally, my overall grade is my personal opinion on the stock and whether I feel it is a buy or a sell. Keep in mind that these are my own opinions and I am not recommending you purchase this stock or make any investment without doing your own research. As a defensive investment, I gave Berkshire Hathaway stock a B plus. Berkshire Hathaway is a very diverse company. They own everything from Geico to Fruit of the Loom to shares in Apple. I think this diversity will help them in the future and if one of their business segments isn't doing too hot, the other one will pick up the slack. And this diversity is really one of the main reasons why I like Berkshire Hathaway as a defensive investment. As a growth investment, I have a bit more worries. I do really like Berkshire Hathaway mainly because of Warren Buffett. I mentioned earlier, but Warren Buffett is considered one of the greatest investors of all time. I think as long as he is at the head of the company, they can the company will continue to grow and do well. But what worries me is he is getting a little older and I'm not sure how the company will do uh, after he decides to retire or step down. As an overall investment, I give Berkshire Hathaway a B. Um, like I said earlier, the thing I really love about Berkshire Hathaway, one of the things I really think they have going for them is Warren Buffett. I think he is a very smart man, um, taking the company in a great direction. And I also like how diverse this company is, and I really think that can help them out if one sector starts to struggle. That'll wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing this type of video for every stock in the Standard & Poor 500, so keep your eye out for future videos. Thanks again for watching, and take care.